Hello and welcome. It's Dr. Jones here and today we're going to be talking about moles in solution. Now before you are three glasses of fruit juice. Now each of them has approximately the same volume which is about 100 millilitres. Now I'm sure you can tell me that the glass on the left hand side of the screen is the most concentrated. It has the most amount of fruit juice. And I'm sure you can see that the one on the right has the least amount of fruit juice. Now this brings us nicely onto the concept of concentration, which is an amount per a volume. So for instance, the one on the left hand side, the glass on the left hand side, has 100 millilitres of fruit juice per 100 millilitres of liquid whereas the glass on the right hand side of the table has approximately 5 millilitres of fruit juice per 100 millilitres of liquid. So it's much, much more dilute and we're going to come across this uh, in our lecture today. Now, before I get started, something else that really used to confuse me uh, when I was learning about moles is the term decimeter cubed. So what is a decimeter? Well, a meter cubed, if you imagine one meter by one meter by one meter, or one meter cube, I'm going to put it up on the screen right now, that is one meter cubed. Now imagine that meter cubed was actually broken down into 1,000 smaller cubes. So these smaller cubes each have the dimension of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So a decimeter is a tenth of a meter. It's 10 centimetres. So what's so special and why do you use decimeter cubed in the first place? Why do you use something such as litres? You know, everybody knows what a litre is. Well, the metre cubed is actually the official SI unit of volume measurement. Now, don't get worried about this. All you really need to know is that one decimeter cubed is equal to one litre. So some people will use one decimeter cubed, some people will use one litre. But if people switch between them, please don't get worried about it. Uh, you know, it's not a big thing. I just wanted to point this out before we started because it's something that really used to confuse me. So now we've covered the preliminaries, let's get on with the main lecture today, which is moles in solution. Now I'm going to be using an example with three beakers. In the first one I've got 75 millilitres of water, in the second I have 200 millilitres of water, and in the third I have 500 millilitres of water. Into each of these beakers I put precisely the same amount of salt, the salt being sodium chloride NaCl. So the first beaker I put 58 grams and then the second the same and the third the same. And what we're going to do is that with these beakers we're going to try and grasp the concept of concentration. Now, we know that we have 58 grams in 75 millilitres in the first beaker. We say that's 58 grams per 75 millilitres. So instead of using the word in 75, chemists often use the word per 75 millilitres. Now that's 58 grams and then we do forward slash 75 millilitres. Now all that means is 58 grams per 75 millilitres. What I want to show you here is different ways of writing a concentration which is an amount per a volume. So chemists use lots of different ways. Here's another one now. It's 58 grams per 75 millilitres. So they do 75 millilitres to the minus one. I just want to show you it's all the same way of writing uh, exactly the same thing. So it's a concentration. Okay, so we know that the first beaker has 58 grams in 75 millilitres. So what is that, how many grams is that per milliliter? Well, if you do 58 grams divided by 75 milliliters, you have 0 0.77 g 
grams in one milliliter. Again, you can see for the other two beakers, if you do the amount in grams divided by the volume, the volume in milliliters, it will give you the amount per milliliter. So we can see that the most concentrated, it's an amount per a volume. The beaker on the left is the most concentrated because it has 0 0.77 grams in one milliliter. And the beaker on the right is the most dilute as it only has 0.12 grams in one milliliter. Again, I just want to show you that there's different ways of writing uh, this concentration per milliliter. So we've got 0 0.77 grams per milliliter or 0 0.77 grams per milliliter. It's exactly the same thing. It's just different ways of writing a concentration. So as we've said all along, we have 58 grams in 75 milliliters. So therefore, how many grams do we have per liter? We have, if you do 1,000 milliliters divided by 75 times 58 equals 773 seven, seven, grams in 1,000 milliliters. So all we're doing here is we're just scaling up, scaling up the amount of grams from 75 milliliters to 1,000 milliliters. So again, we can see that the beaker on the left, there's 773 grams in 1,000 milliliters, and the beaker on the right, we only have 116 grams in 1,000 milliliters. So again, another way of writing it is 773 grams per 1,000 milliliters. And what we're saying here is that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So we can write 773 grams, 773 grams per liter, because 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So here we have the concentration. So it's 773 grams per liter, an amount, which is the grams, per a volume, which is the liter. So 773 grams per litre on the left hand side and 116 grams per litre on the right. So we can say 773 grams per litre. This is just different ways of writing exactly the same thing. I just want to show you the different types of nomenclature used by chemists. So 1 litre equals 1 dm cubed. We've gone through this earlier. So 773 grams per dm cubed. So we say 773 grams per dm cubed. It's just, what we're saying is, we're just using exactly the same amount. It's an amount per volume. It's just different types of nomenclature that chemists use. And I just want to show you, because if one person has seen one type, another person has seen another, I just want to show you that, you know, they're all the same. So, we know from the periodic table, if you see my last video, that the atomic mass of sodium is 23 and the atomic mass of chlorine is 35. And that neatly adds up to 58 grams per mole. So the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58 grams. One mole equals 58 grams. So we know that we've got 58 grams in 75 milliliters. Now, we know that we have one mole in 75 milliliters, whereas on the beaker on the right, we know we have one mole in 500 milliliters. So that's one mole per 75 milliliters for the beaker on the left. Again, we can say one mole per 75 milliliters. It's exactly the same, just different ways of writing it. So, how many grams do we have per litre? Well, we scale up 75 milliliters to one litre. That's the calculation you can see there. And as I've said earlier, we have 773 grams per litre. Now, if we have the amount of grams and we divide it by the amount that one mole equals, we will have the amount of moles per litre. 
So just think about that for a minute. If you have 773 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 58, we've got 13.3 moles per liter. Now, if you work through the other two columns on your own, um, I'm sure you can see that the one on the right, we've only got two moles per liter, two moles per liter, so it's much, much more dilute than the one on the left. That's 13.3 moles per liter. And again, we can write it, instead of saying 13.3 moles per liter, we can say 13.3 moles per dm cubed because one liter equals one dm cubed. Uh, and I would just like to say thank you very much uh, uh, for, for watching this lecture. It's meant to be more as a reference um, lecture that you combine with your other material, say your, uh, uh, your, your teacher's notes, and hopefully you can use it uh, to combine the knowledge and we've learned something about solutions. Okay, thank you.